Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed. I know you don't get to see my face very often, and in these weird times, everything seems so distant from everybody, so I thought I would do a beginning to my video with my face. So either you're welcome or I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Depends on how you feel, I suppose. So, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I do with my worm castings that have been too wet. And if you've been following my channel, you know that my grow up bins and my European Nightcrawler Red Wiggler bins, the, um, the, the bins that started out cocoon only have become super wet and I've been trying to dry them out for about two weeks and I've had absolutely no luck. So um, I've gone to my plan B and I've done this before and it's a bit of a mess but if you need the castings and you happen to have some that are already super wet this is a method that you can use to extract the castings from non-composted material and you can have your cake and eat it too. So, what I'm going to do, I've got a setup behind me here, is I have a bucket of water that has, I usually put like fish drops in it to get rid of the chlorine and whatnot, just in case. I don't want to damage the worms that may or may not still be in the castings. So, I put the fish drops in like a three gallon bucket of water I put the handful of castings, or a big ball of castings, I don't know, cantaloupe size of castings in the water, I mix it up, and then after about a half hour, I run that all through a strainer that I usually use to sift my castings with, and I use a little bit bigger of a uh, screen so that more things can go through and it doesn't clog up. Trust me, if you've ever done it, you know what I'm talking about. The screens will clog up super fast. So. After a half hour, you run it through the screen and let it sit so that all of the water comes back out again and whatever's left on top of the screen, you put back in the bin. Um, it's got all of the uncomposted material. It also has the eggs and any worms that might have still been in there. So you can retain your critters and you can also feed your plants, which is what I'm doing here. I have uh, rescued quite a bit more of my green peppers hot peppers, in between peppers, from the frost this year. So I have an entire um, table of them. <laughs> so they need fed up, and the worms need a little bit more room. So win-win. So I'm going to show you the procedure, and I'll bring it back in a second. Okay, so what we're looking at here for my setup is I have a three-gallon bucket of water that is room temperature, and it's been treated with fish drops. Uh, you know, if you can just go and get it at Walmart, a couple drops, gets rid of all the chlorine and chloranamines in the tap water. And then I have a, like this is a gold panner screen, and these are quarter inch holes. Um, this is usually what I would sift my castings through the first time in order to get most of everything, but cocoons can go through here. Um, but for this case, we'll be okay. And then I have my five gallon bucket that this fits in nicely. You can get these off of Amazon. Um, there's, I think, five in the set, and they go from a twentieth of an inch up to a quarter of an inch, and I think it's about 50 bucks, 50 or 60, depending. All right, so here are my red wigglers that have been super wet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a big handful of these castings, and I'm going to put them in the bucket. I know, you're seeing worms, don't freak out. They're not going to be in there for that long. In case anybody's paying attention, still have corn. And I usually have a good feel for it. This is taking just a little bit more. But the castings will dissolve almost completely. This is not hurting the worms. The worms can live in water for days, as far as I understand it. And just kind of move it around, dissolve any big chunks or pull out any big chunks.
and everything that's left in there is going to be paper pulp that has not been turned into castings and other food bits that are not done yet. All right, we'll let that sit for about a half hour and we'll stir it up again. Okay, so now we're back. We're going to stir it up again just a little bit, get all the grit off the bottom of it. And then I'm going to slide over the five gallon bucket here. And then I'm going to pour it through. Kind of have to go kind of fast at the end, or otherwise you'll end up with a bunch of muck in the bottom of your bucket. And then what you're going to want to do is just let this sit, and it will drain off most of the water. And depending upon how much water you need to water your plants with, you can keep doing this until you run out of uh, your super wet castings. Now what I do when I put these back in is I will take dry cardboard, not my prepared bedding, but actual dry cardboard, and I'll put it in the bottom of the bin and put this on top of it and mix it up. But until that time, you have to let it sit. This stays pretty wet for, I don't know, probably 15 minutes to 20 minutes. So you let it sit there and uh, everything will go through. So then you end up with some mud that is, I've got a nice drip pan under there, so I'm not making a big mess this time. But let that drip until it gets pretty dry, you know, like peanut butter maybe. And then you have some chocolate milk looking water over here. And then you're ready to water your plants. All right, so here we go. Here are our green peppers. And I am going to water them with the new worm tea. Of course, this isn't, you know, proper worm tea where it's been bubbled and had nutrients added to it. This is basically the bare bones worm tea. I do have a video of how I make my usual worm tea, but it is winter time. I don't want to get excited and give the plants a bunch of nutrients they can't use. So this is just keeping the biome alive in my system here. Because uh, worm tea can be used as almost like a pesticide, um, keeps the good bacteria on the leaves and stems and uh, will keep a lot of things away, believe it or not. I'm not going very deep when I go into the bucket here. I'm just skimming off the top because if there are fines or eggs, I don't want to put those on my plants. But it is okay to um, if they end up in the pot. In fact, most of my plants do have uh, worms growing in the pot. Okay, I'm going to move him over oops, to drain and do the next one. This is just a mortar tray that I did have in the basement um, for my worms, which are now living in different arrangements due to uh, the worm apocalypse, which I'm still not having any more luck getting rid of her. I put traps, now I have a live trap in the basement. Um, 
but uh, she is getting very fat eating Snickers, I think, and hopefully we don't end up with more worms. Nope, we want more worms. We want less rats. I don't even uh, rinse this off unless, you know, I end up with, like, chunks on it. But if you get to the bottom of the barrel, sometimes there are chunks, and then you just want to rinse that off. This also gives me a good time to look at my plants. Okay, move that one over so it can drain. And the, the green peppers, all the peppers, don't really need that much water this time of year. I go almost two weeks without watering them. So when I do water them, I think I, in the past I had said that I just sparingly water around the bottom, but unfortunately then the dry part sucks the moisture out of the wet part and then you don't end up with a really great condition. So as I said, I'm getting to that part where there's getting a little bit of worm uh, castings. So I kind of shake the plant, and if it doesn't come off, then I do give it a little bit of a spray with a spray bottle or something to get it off of there. All right. Well, I have another six uh, green peppers that I need to do, and you know what watering plants looks like, so you don't need to be there for that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to bring you back when I put the drained castings back hey, in the bin. We're back. Just putting regular dried shredded cardboard and paper in there and that now that these have uh, drained about like peanut butter give or take you can tell there's worms in there they're totally fine they're healthy they just had a little spa day and then what I do is I just go in there and I mix them in I actually have more tea to make. This isn't all of them. But I will just keep going until um, the casting slash paper mixture is, is our usual amount, which is like a wrung out sponge. It might end up being a little bit wetter, but the cardboard will actually absorb more later. It's not instantaneous. All right, guys. Well, if you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not already a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.